Mark and Jada here. You are tuning into the God Bull Life Podcast, where anything goes because love covers all. God uses marriage to grow us and accomplish his will. He's got plans for your marriage, too. This is Mark. And Jade. And this is the God Bull Life Podcast. Welcome to the finale. Finale. The, the finale. The last one. The last one. Of this season. Of this season. Definitely seasons to come. Yes. So we wanted to just kind of chat a little bit with y'all before we hop into this episode. This episode is one that we want you to be in a place of peace when you watch. Uh, it can be triggering because sure. of the sensitive um, testimony that Mark shares about things that he's experienced and lived through, but has healed from. But has healed from, so, but God. But God. But God. Because truth be told, nothing but God in this episode. Facts, facts. Y'all, this is not scripted. We had a whole different idea of how this episode was gonna go. And quickly. God took over. We literally said, God, do your thing, and God did his thing. Pray before you watch this. Um, um, get into a zone, get into a space where you can really tap in and tune in and be honest with yourself first yeah. and, and those around you. Um, and we'll, we'll have some resources for you guys to check out if you absolutely um, need it, if you've experienced any of these things. But our task for this entire podcast, um, this entire show, this entire delivery was to be as transparent, as open as possible because God, God heals where you are, not where you pretend to be. 100%. So we're relocating where we are, where we've been, how we got here. So it's important that as you guys watch this, um, just stay open, stay patient. If there are people around you that maybe they've experienced these things, um, be gentle with them. Yeah. Be loving with them. Sensitive. Sensitive. It's okay to feel when you watch it's this episode. It's totally okay to feel. It's like okay we, if you <laughs> feel something wrestle up and kind of build up in you when you watch this. Because if it hasn't happened to you, it's happened to someone you know. And we did the same thing. Like, we, we've we spent today crying last night just um releasing yeah and we encourage y'all do the same as well and our intent and prayer for this episode is that after viewing it you will be on a path to deliverance on a path to healing or this could be the thing that you know okay i need to heal i need to do something because something happened to me that maybe I haven't even been honest about with myself that I actually experienced. So we're we're praying for you all. We're praying for it, whether it's happened to you, whether you did it. We're praying for everybody. Yeah. The point is healing. Yes. The point is love. Yes. And um, yeah, just wanted to share that before we dive into a um, very deep, very transparent um, part of who we are and what God has done and let us be living walking breathing testimonies of how incredible how merciful how loving um, God truly is we hope you enjoy this episode we hope you enjoy this episode welcome back to the God Bo Life podcast with my beautiful wife Jay God Bo. Mm, mm, mm. You look good. Thank you. Extremely good. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. All right, we got to hear and finish this good. Oh, Lord Jesus. I'm dead serious. I'm so serious. This is the finale. This is the finale. And it feels good, honestly, to complete it. Yeah. Like we can say, okay, God, we did what you told us to do. <laughs> yeah. Like, literally, <laughs> without a whole bunch of guidance, without a whole bunch of... Plans. Plan, like, we didn't have no plans. No plan, um, no script. <laughs> we're in, in uh, right outside of Austin, which is, like, one of our, like, fun places, really because it reminds us of... 
Portland. Portland. It's like yeah. super chill. It's like outdoorsy. Eclectic. It's eclectic. Yeah. It smells different here. Yeah. Um, and just being being amongst like nature. Like we can yeah. hear a waterfall right now as we're recording. Yeah. And it sounds incredible. But like, why why do we choose that for this? Is it a is it like a, a reason or we do this often, like we'll like part of part of not date night, mm-hmm. but part of like um um just us switching it up. We'll go book an Airbnb somewhere that most people wouldn't go. Yeah. But we find like a firehouse in the middle right. of nowhere. Um if we gotta cook, we have to cook. If we don't, cool too. And we just enjoy each other. Mm-hmm. Which reminds me of our first year marriage anniversary yeah. trip. Yeah. Which is when we like, um, honestly, I feel like we not set this plan in motion, mm-hmm. but we did kind of lay a foundation of, of us and how yeah. we can be better people to be better partners. And not only that, but truly like deciding that we're supposed to do something together. Like, it's Facts. one thing for us to be married and doing our own things individually, but when we went on that trip, that was the first time we really said, like, okay, God, you want us to do something together? And it wasn't until, what, months later or a year later that he actually revealed what we were supposed to do, but we already wrote what we were supposed to do in 2019. So, like, it was like, it was a matter of just us, us catching up. Which I feel like we're doing that now because we ended the last episode with the saying, God saw this then. We say things often like, um, they know who you are. Yeah. They being yeah. everybody but you. Like yeah. most of the time people see who you are before you see who you are, which is why you get like... The, the threats and you get the the opposition because yeah. it's like when God is on you, like when what you're doing is truly anointed, mm-hmm. most of the time people sit on you first. Like, like take this back to the Bible, to the Bible, like we keep doing Saul. Saul didn't want to be the king. Mm-hmm. Like Saul was hiding when God chose him. So I was like, I don't, I don't want this because most people wouldn't want this. And mm-hmm. I even think about like some of the stuff going on now where people send us messages. Um, I think you deleted a comment. <laughs> what? So I was like, all I got to do is talk about God. And, oh, yeah. And um, Listen, you're going to get deleted and, and blocked real home. quick. <laughs> hey, I tell the story. I told the story. Um, I forgot who I was talking to. But my sister made a joke like, Mark, you always been so deep. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you always, it's always some prayer with you. You're just going to go to a, hmm. I'm like, you used to call me a hoe. So growth, okay, because. Come on, growth. Okay. I was actually about to, I was writing a comment to that person when you deleted it. Oh. So I wrote it. At first it was like, this person can't be added. Then it was like, um, the comment's gone. But I was going to be very real and very transparent. What were you going to say? Um... I was a hoe. That's why this transformation is, has to be God. Yeah. Because there was not a time where I could imagine. Like, most of the conversations before here <laughs> and before us and even when we started was all the wrong things. It was about um, um, women I've been with and, yeah. and, and like the stuff that I've done and how many I could get and, and all of these things. Remember when I asked you, asked you what your number was? Or did Say. you ask me first? Say. That was like maybe the first week of us dating. Say. It was like, look. <laughs> and and that was lie? when I realized, I was or like. I don't want to tell the truth. Okay. That's a high number. But that's why like. God seeing this then and like them seeing this is like, if you ever did it, like this is for people. If you ever believed what God said about you, what he says about you, what he's been saying about you since before you knew about you. Yeah. Like the unlock 
the amount of lives that can be changed. Like, think about this, like the amount of lives that's going to be changed because we're being real, because I'm not sitting here and saying, yeah, I'm. Or trying to preach to y'all, like yeah, trying I, to. No, I can't, we're I not. can't tell you. Not doing that. <laughs> I can't tell you like how to get here, but I can share that trust in God, build a relationship with him, mm-hmm. be transparent with somebody. Yeah. Like somebody, I feel like oftentimes in our, as black folk, as black men, thinking about crying. So the other day I had this epiphany. I'm like, man, I'll be congested. Oh, yeah. I'll be really congested. But when I'm in full worship mode, on the floor, just in reverence to God and tears are flowing. And I'm like, for some reason, a lot of snot comes out. (laughs) So either <laughs> my body makes snot when I cry, which don't sound right, because that's, that's information. It's not good. Or when I cry, I'm releasing things that shouldn't be in me anyway. So as a black man, hearing men tell me, suck it up, mm. suck it up, don't cry. It's making me more congested. It's messing me up physically, It's literally mentally. making, it can make you sick. Mucus in the body. This is. And I'm still getting that out because now I'm crying more. Now I'm like releasing it. Releasing. And it's like, who's talking about that? Yeah. And I ain't that smart. I don't, I don't have a degree. I, I was telling um, Mario, our producer, coming here, like, um, <laughs> so I driving through Austin, I'm like, shoot, I don't have a degree. And I taught a college credited course at the University of Texas. Wild. So, so I'm not the smartest person in the world at all. So I know more men know this, mm-hmm. but we're not sharing it. Like we have platforms like these and we're talking about, you know, all the other things. And I feel like it's important that we come back to have these types of conversations because more people can see, hey, this can be you. Right. I didn't want this. Did you want this? No. <laughs> what was your if you would have said to OJ before, if you'd have said to lipstick and curls, where you would be at the tender age of 31, what would you have told her? Ooh. I mean, okay, let's put a number on it. So 25 year old or 21 year old Jay. No, 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 no. 25 year old Jay. 25? 25. Okay, 25 year old Jay was Actually, no, Stephen. No, 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 no. What? 20. 2016, 26-year-old Jay. No, that would have been, I was 25 when we met. 25, I'm tripping, I'm talking about, yes. So, 25. When we met. Yeah. When you walked, when you walked through North Park, girl. Oh, God. With that voter sticker pin on. (laughs) I was like, ooh, you go, girl, you care about, I ain't never voted in my life, but she walking up here, I'm I'm sure going to act like I voted. (laughs) I voted for Barack, you know, black folks say that's the one time we voted, I voted for Barack, you lying. (laughs) But, (laughs) but, I was like, okay, this girl looking all. Yeah, I care yeah. about things. Okay, yeah. so yeah. what would you, what would that 25 year old um, woman say about, what would you have thought 30 was gonna be like for you? Everybody I, got five year plans. <laughs> honestly, I didn't have a five year plan. Like really? 25 was, I mean, 2016 <laughs> was a very crazy year for me, like, especially the beginning of the year because. December 30th, 2015, I was, I was quitting Lipstick and Curls. So in my mind, there was no Lipstick and Curls at 31. There was no Lipstick and Curls in five years at that point. So to think that I'm still in a space where I've been able to sustain our family. Mm. Like we've bought a home we are able to do things like this where God has made a way for us to truly operate in our purposes and not only for ourselves, but like we get to allow other people to also do that too. And for me, that's like incredible because I wasn't thinking about that at 25 at all. I was just trying to get mine and trying to, and not even just get mine in that sense, but like just figure out mine. Figure out, like, what am I supposed to do? Because at that point, I 
still didn't know that lipstick and curls was like a career of sorts. Like, I didn't think that, like, like I was talking to, to some of our team on the way here today. Like, I would always think to myself at that time specifically, what am I going to do in five years? Like, the back of my mind, I was like, there's no I way I can sustain this in five years, I used to four or five years. Doing them <laughs> stupid plans. It was like, yeah, so what jobs do you, do you want to be in in the future? Okay, you know that based on what I'm at. Okay, well, tell us how you plan to get there. Um, <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know how I got here, to be honest with you, miss, but since y'all making us do <laughs> Y'all making us do this, so let me yeah. make up something. But yeah, it's, it's like yeah. But Jesus tells you, don't worry about tomorrow. Right, which is so contradictory to like to everything. everything. In the world. To, that's <laughs> to everything. a whole thing too. Like the the whole the more we go down this path of our relationship with God, mm -hmm. the more backwards everything feels like, feels and like. it seems like. How could I possibly know what I'm going to be doing in five years? You supposed to have, I no, don't know. No, you supposed to have that plan. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing with your life if you don't know what you're doing in five years? What do you What are you doing with your life if you don't know what you're doing in six months? Yeah, I'm asking you that. What are you doing with your life? I, whatever God tells me to do. Mm, okay. See, now that like, that is a different different response than what twenty nine year old Jay would have said. Oh, truly. Because twenty nine year old Jay was still out here trying to get her coin. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What? But it, it's amazing the way God works to where when, A, when you stop trying to do it yourself. Yes, 100%. And fully give it to him. Yeah. He not only makes it, because I couldn't have imagined this. <laughs> Me either. I would have been like, yeah, we shooting a podcast. We'd have been in the garage. Right. <laughs> Doing it ourselves. Doing it ourselves. <laughs> like. And, and, and it would have been impactful. Yeah. I believe people would be changed and impacted because God doesn't need a lot. All he yeah. needs is a willing vessel. Yeah. But when you give it to him, you really get an opportunity to see yeah. that, hey, it's bigger than what you can mm -hmm. think and what you can imagine if you actually turn over your gift to him. But even that, you got to do the inner work first. Therapy. Ooh. You got to do that part first. Did we talk about therapy yet? I don't know. I don't think we did. Therapy. Ooh. Game Ooh. changer. Okay, so Game changer. I just felt this literally in my stomach when I said therapy because there was a topic that we were supposed to talk about that, it, that I was supposed to go public with. Oh. Should we do that here? It's a finale. Yeah. Wow. It's time. How do we get here? So... On so many levels, this wasn't, this shouldn't be the case. I shouldn't be sitting here in this beautiful barn with this amazing woman, with our beautiful kids in my right mind, um, in deep relationship with God, like deep relationship. I'm not supposed to be here. The enemy had a lot of tricks up his sleeve to keep me from getting to this moment. He used um, things that I was born with. He used things that I didn't ask for. All to keep me from speaking about God. And it almost worked because for years I was like, yeah, I grew up in the church and all, but I ain't really, that ain't really my thing. Like, I, I've seen too much. I know too much. I've experienced too much. And if that's what it means to be a part of the church, I don't want to part. I'll try my own hand. Um, so when I was probably from the time I was, I ain't gonna say the time. <laughs> I'm just saying it happened. Okay. But for about a six, seven year span, I was sexually abused by a pastor. And oh, man. that almost stopped me from using the gifts that God gave me. That, that almost kept me from being the light that we see now. 
And I even think about people that I that I know or like people that I hear about that have gone through like similar things that don't turn out this way. So I I, I take no credit. Um, God, I'm talking about in some of my darkest times, some of my darkest seasons, when I'm just like literally running from God because I'm like, how could this happen to me? The cool kid, the, the one that dress fly, the one that's an athlete, the one that's doing all the things that I thought would keep that away. Um, even something like my porn addiction, like that, that was like lit on fire because I'm trying to prove to myself, like, there's nothing wrong with you. Like, you work for women. Um, and so I would, I remember I was watching a documentary in Oregon and I hadn't even shared this with you yet. And first of all, I ain't really a documentary friend. This girl, she, she, I, <laughs> I can only take so much of some things. I'd be like, look, I can't watch all this sad stuff all day. <laughs> like give me one of these a month and I'm good. Like there's enough going on in my life that I don't need somebody else's sadness, but every now and then she'll talk me into watching one. And I don't even think I was trying to watch this one. I was probably working and it was on the TV. And I start to hear a lot of common things. I'm like, that sounds familiar. That sounds like something I, like, I dealt with. And I, I hadn't even said it out loud yet to myself, let alone to her. And I, Broke out in tears. Mm -hmm. Like she was probably, she was probably the first person to see me cry consistently. And it would only be in our place, in the comfort of our home. And I would still be like, yeah, like trying to cover the fact that I was crying. Like, yeah. Because somehow I wasn't a man if I was shedding tears. Like yeah. that's not manly. Men don't do that. Yeah. That was a lie. But I'm sitting here, finally, I look at her, I said, babe, I gotta tell you something, I ain't never told nobody. Like, I've never told anybody. Like, the only person that knew in my mind was God. I didn't even know. I was like, I'm not even talking about this. And I shared it with her. And something changed. Like, something, like, broke. Mm -hmm. And that would start the journey of healing. Mm -hmm. And it still wasn't until therapy. Mm -hmm. Start therapy and the man is like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to therapy for a porn addiction. I'm like, I'm going to therapy because I've tried to get out of porn for 20 years. <laughs> like tried everything I had. Like I'm like, I'm not doing it for a week. <sighs> uh, eight days later, damn, <laughs> gosh. Okay, I'm not doing this for two weeks. <sighs> 13th day. A foot, 15 day, pain. So then God was like, tell your wife. Excuse me, sir? <laughs> tell her, well, I'm trying to keep it from her. She don't know what I be doing in the bathroom when I say I'm going to the bathroom, do number two. She don't know what's going on there. So let's keep it that way. He's like, do you want to get free? Yeah, because I'm not, I'm not taking this into my marriage. You know, that's what most men say, I ain't doing this in my marriage. That's where the line is drawn there. Nah, <laughs> kept happening and finally I had to tell her. I told her um, and then that wasn't enough because I would have like steps where I would, I would go. I thought, okay, maybe it's how many times we have sex. That didn't matter. And so finally, I'm like, okay. The guy was like, tell her every time. And that was when, for, that was the first kind of like switch flip. And then I'm like, okay. I'll tell her every time. And then um, 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 the code, which was kind of like the thing that broke it. Yeah. She has a code on my phone now. I can't go to certain sites or nothing without having a code that only she has. I'm not stupid. So I'm not going to go ask her for the code. Because <laughs> she know what I'm using the code for if I ask for the code. Like, it's like, <laughs> if your man asks you for the code, <laughs> 
it's over. Like you might as well give it to him because he ain't gonna do right. Joking. Pray for him. But please do. Pray for him. <laughs> but that that led me to therapy because I'm like, okay, like this seems like it broke it. I wanna make sure I started going to therapy. It was incredible. And the guy was like, he blew my mind. He's like, man, um, you do know that you don't just start watching porn, right? I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, well, something like exposed you. I'm like, what you mean? I that, never knew that. And I, I, we have this tendency to bury things as far back as we can. We bury them, put a wall up, then we put um, barbed wire fence around that wall, then we put dynamite in certain areas, and then we put pit bulls, and then mm -hmm. because nothing can get here. And then we black it all out. Then we black it all out. He had me write a letter to my nine-year-old self. I was like, oh, shoot, okay. Because I'm trying to figure out, like, where could this have started? And sure enough, I went home, and I was going to save the letter for later. I was excited about the, 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 the letter period. I mean, he asked me things like, um, what did he ask me? He said, um, he said, shoot, um, you gave me this list of people to forgive, but there's a problem with your list. I'm like, what? Like, I put the man on there. I forgave the man. So, like, what is it? And he's like, um, you didn't forgive yourself. So, like, therapy changed from that perspective. And actually, therapy helped me to forgive him even more. Mm -hmm. Because I've forgiven him surface level, but what I learned was before I could forgive him fully, I had to forgive myself. Mm -hmm. And so, um, therapy brought that on. But I wrote the letter, and it hit me like a ton of bricks. Like everything. And I was so shook that I ran out, told you. And then I knew, okay, talked to the man. Um, I reached out to him. Um, which was a big deal. It was a big deal. Which is crazy. I, I, I don't... <laughs> I've, I've learned... Since I've learned that forgiveness is about you, mm -hmm. it actually, for me at least, I may be the only one, but it makes it easier to do it. Yeah, because you're not doing it for the other person. You're, you're doing it for your own peace and your own... Because if I was doing it for him, Yeah. I, I probably wouldn't have... I don't know if I would have done... I mean, maybe I would have done it just to say I did it mm -hmm. and it meant nothing. Mm -hmm. But I reached out to him and you know, let him know that I know what was going on. Like, so we have an understanding that it happened. And he apologized and he was just like, yeah, like, thank you for the way you handling it, handling it. And I was like, yeah, I, I, this ain't me. This is God. Because I, Mark wants to handle this differently. Yeah. Mark is still there. Like, that's why the time with God is important. Like men, time with God every single day is important because the journey don't stop once you get saved. The journey don't stop once you can say I've spent a week straight in my Bible lab. Mm -hmm. The journey is continuous. Yeah. Um, 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 the enemy and the spirit are constantly fighting back and forth with every choice that you make. And as soon as you let your guard down, there's space for him to attack. Yeah. And if you're on your game, he's going to take that opportunity because they don't come that often. Right. So, that part of me knew this is the Holy Spirit. I, I, it, it ain't, it's not me. Yeah. Even, even being able to have any sort of dialogue with this man was the Holy Spirit. It, it's not me. And I have no hate. No, it, like, I told him, I love you. And he caught him off guard because he wasn't expecting, he thanked me for the way I handled it. He wasn't expecting me to do it the way I did it, but again, it wasn't about him. Right. He was just a part of the process. Yeah. And we fearing God, right? Anybody else, <laughs> you just <laughs> that. But yeah, um, and 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 yeah, it it's something that like I definitely feel like 
needs to be talked about, needs yeah. to be shared because it happens more than we think. Yeah. It's affecting a lot of people. It's affecting a lot of men. Yeah. It's affecting a lot of families yeah. because that's something that the enemy uses to literally change the trajectory of your life. Not just your life, generationally. And generationally. Because that thing hops from one generation to the next to the next until someone decides to break it off. And that's what you did. We did. Because <laughs> I also couldn't have did that without you. Like, I don't, the magnitude of what I felt, probably telling my mom was probably the- That was hard. The, the second hardest <sighs> from actually saying it out loud yeah. with somebody that's around. Yeah. That, Same thing with the cheating. It was like the saying it out loud part just did something different. Yeah. Where it was like, okay. Yeah. Like, now it's out here. Yeah. Now I'm going to deal with it. Yeah. Now it's like, it's no longer just in my head as if it didn't happen. It's like, yeah. nah, this is legit. Yeah. This is legit. Yeah. And, and exposing the darkness, exposing the, the attacks is how you get rid of it. Is how you and not exposing it. from a place like this is the thing too because I even talk to people like the few people that I've told like some of them say oh yeah like you should do this you should do that to them and they mm -hmm. they don't deserve nah that's not nah that's because not bad. what I understand is they didn't just think it up either mm -hmm. it probably happened to them yeah and it happened to the person that happened to them yeah and we don't break those things to pour hate on right. top of it because that just makes it worse. But the idea is that everybody's free. Like God sent Jesus for everybody. Everybody. God didn't say for God so loved black people, for, for God so loved white folks, mm -hmm. for God so loved people that loved him back. Yeah. It says, for God so loved the world. So if that's the case, that means even the people that you don't like have access to him. Mm -hmm. We're not gatekeepers. We're not the ones that can say, oh, well, you can get in heaven. You can't. Oh, uh, you got some. Right. I don't like your track record. Get out of here. Like, we don't get it. We, we may feel like we can do that, but judging is not our job. At all. At all. So, yeah, like, like it, we're talking about this here. It's a safe space. And I get a chance to say it the way I want to say it. I don't wish that man or any man that have gone through it, that are dealing with it, that have done it. I don't mean y'all. We're praying for y'all because that's God didn't create you to be that. Right. That that we're we have to all. If you believe in God, if God created everybody, everything, and God is only good. That means God can only create good things. So if somebody is, act, is acting outside of who they were created to be, then that's not them. That's what's working inside of them. So Jesus, was care Jesus never threw anybody away. Mm -hmm. People that maybe man would say, oh, you deserve to be. No. Got it. Jesus healed them as they were. Not, let me kill you and bring you back. Like, so I want to... Use this time and this platform to say, if you are a victim, if you are a victim, if you are that person that have, has done it, I love you. God still loves you. There's still hope for you. You can have this. Like you don't, you can have this. This isn't foreign. I'm not just, I'm not God's favorite. I don't deserve this. Even though that happened to me, I've done things too. A lot of things. I don't deserve this. This ain't because I deserve it. I ain't got my sticker card punched 10 times and then seven times, 12 times. Not like, no. Submit everything to him. Yeah. I can do this because I gave it all to him. Yeah. I didn't try to do it myself because I... I you ain't got the willpower. I ain't got, I ain't got the power. Period. So, yeah, it, um... um I love you. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for us. Um, and hopefully 
my testimony can shed light on the topic, but can also bring both parties to the table to heal because yeah. we deserve it. Yeah. Like, like families deserve it. Yeah. Like we need more men in the homes. Like, like, like that, that, yeah, yeah, I can, I can go on that. Well, uh. I'm proud of you for sharing. <gasps> Stop. No, I'm joking. But I really am because what you're saying at a time, you said it yourself, you couldn't even speak it out loud hey, by look, yourself. Say, when I say that was one of the most embarrassing things ever, like what? I was like, that can never get out. That's going to my grave. I wish, what? And if somebody tell it, they know it, we fight. Like, that's, I was like, yeah, yeah. And, so, and yeah. babe, like, you don't even realize how powerful that is, that you are telling your story and really saying, like, even somebody like you. Because people can put you on a pedestal and make, think, oh, he fly, he, that, that. But oh, no. you, ain't, you ain't no different than anyone else. We are no different than anyone else. At the end of the day, we are people. Mm -hmm. We are people that go through things. And it, it is only by God's grace that we can experience peace and love and joy in this lifetime. But there is a there is a process that has to happen in our hearts because we are subject to attacks from the enemy, especially chosen people with very, very specific anointings on their life are attacked at such young ages. And, and we end up growing up thinking that somehow all the stuff we're struggling with is like our fault. Like, but think about that. I had, in therapy, I thought about that same mm. thing. Like, mm. I was six years old. I was 10 years old going through things. Didn't even understand. Didn't even like. understand, but yet here I am, 31 years old, 30 at the time when I'm going through my therapy recognizing that jade you were a child babe you were a child no of course you didn't understand of course it didn't make sense especially when things like that happen from people that you love like let's not even front like people can say they love us all day but when we actually love people back and then they hurt us in ways that are unfathomable, things that never get out, things they that you never, never want to tell people. They never get out, ever. <laughs> and, but the thing is, when you started being honest about that, so many other things, like, it was just like a, I, I mean, mean I'll, the cheat, I'll, it was I'll all wait. of it just like started breaking down, like, all of the strongholds, the fear, the, like, fear. the fear was was broken. Like we we oftentimes give the enemy too much credit. It's almost like we used to always laugh because we would have this um this this gate that was supposed to block our dog from going upstairs, but it wouldn't fit. So we just would like prop it up on the stairs. And at any time, he could have ran, right? It wasn't connected to nothing. He could have went right through it. But he never did because he's thinking that he's stuck. Mm -hmm. That's how fear does with us. Mm -hmm. At any moment, you can break it easily. Or, God, can you move this out the way for me? Oh, no, no, no. Like, but he ain't going to move it away for you. <laughs> he's not going to. But like recognizing your, that like you need your participation to be. Is yeah, necessary. it has to be a quick. Yeah. It has to be you he's and waiting. God. He's like. Like with, with, you know, kids walking around a bike, we're like, yeah, we can do it. Come on. Come. God is like, come on. You can do it. Mm -hmm. Trust me. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. Take, take the step. Yeah. Dude, I, I remember, I mean, going back to the story because it's, it's so just relevant. It was like, tell her, talk to her. You can do it. Trust me. Even with the porn thing. I was, I, was, I was shook, like, she gonna think I'm 
freaky and weird and she's going to want to break up with me and she's going to think that I'm just this nasty, disgusting human being. And like, it was like, no. 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 I remember, I remember a conversation where you were like, baby, I lose the shame. You lose the shame. Because that was in, like, when you keep it in here mm -hmm. and don't say it out of here, mm -hmm. the enemy can trick you with your own thoughts. And then you start helping the enemy by getting creative with the thoughts. With the thought. You think that, you know, the enemy keeps ta attacking me. No, he dropped one nugget. And you done nurtured that nugget for 10 years. I have a question for you. Hmm. I wanted to ask you this actually for a minute. It's great that it's on camera. This is awesome. Um, when did it click for you that you could get naked with me? Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. We so appreciate your support and we'd love for you to leave us a review wherever you are listening and also visit us on social media. You can find us at Mark Z. Godbolt and Jade Godbolt on Instagram as well as The Godbolt Life on Instagram. Stay tuned for part two of But God.